With spring coming up, I thought I would share my five favorite flies. Plus, I'll share my secret fly at the end of the video. So stay tuned. All right, first up is the venerable or highly despised San Juan worm. Now this fly is not very complicated. In its simplest form, it's just a piece of chenille on a hook. Now, there's some different variations of it. Some will have some red ribbing on it. Some add some beads to help get it down. And then there's lots of different colors. Now, the San Juan worm will work all the time, but some of my favorite times to fish it is when the river has dirtied up. So you might get a big rain or it might warm up and the river starts to rise and gets off color. And as it starts to come down, this is a great time to fish the San Juan worm. I don't know if it's because naturals are actually getting washed into the river or if the color just helps it stand out in that sort of off color water. But I've had some amazing days fishing the San Juan worm in that kind of conditions. So another time to fish this is when you can find a section in the river that has sort of muddy and seaweedy bottom. Generally, this is places where it kind of slows down. Maybe it's next to some frog water. I always can think of a few places that I switch out my fly and make sure I fish a San Juan worm through these sections. General way to fish these, under indicator is a great way to fish them. Euro nymphing them is a great way to fish them. I tend to always dead drift them. I'm not really swinging them or giving them much um, action. In this same category, um, and is a bit more of a modern fly, is the highly controversial squirm worming. This is really the same fly, but it's made out of this rubber material. Originally, this was rubber material that was on a kid's toy that had all these long pieces of rubber off of it, and someone decided that that would make a really great worm pattern. Nowadays, fly companies are producing squirmy wormy material in a couple different colors. This fly is probably number four in terms of catching compared to my secret uh, fly. The next two flies are very similar. The first one is the old school pat stone in coffee color. The Yakima River has several types of stonefly species in it. Stonefly nymphs are kind of like the cheeseburgers of the river system. We have lots of them in the river. There's lots of different kinds. They are pretty big and they provide lots of calories to the fish. You can fish these all year long and they will catch fish, but the first big bug hatch of the year is the squala hatch. And so these things start moving and the fish start king in on them. It's useful to be fishing these before you start seeing the adults emerging. The Pat Stone coffee color, AKA the turd, has been used on the yak for as long as I can remember. And every year I wonder, is this the year that the trout are gonna stop eating this fly? And every year, the answer is no, not this year. I like to fish these dead drifted, mostly under an indicator or euronymphing. And I've got a couple different versions here. This one is the kind that you'll probably find at fly shops without a bead head and probably lots of lead wire underneath here. This is a version that was popularized by Lance Egan, who's, on the, who's often on the US fly fishing team. Um, he likes to use black bead and a smaller uh, chenille. And so it gives it a much skinnier body than say the typical pat stone. He likes to tie his on these bent shaft hooks, which gives the fly a bit of an arch. A newer pattern that I've started using, and I think I saw this recommended by Reds a few years ago, um, is the TJ Hooker. Now, if you look at it, you'll see that it is also coffee colored. But one of the differences about this is that it has this cool tail on the end of it. This version is tied on a jig hook. This is directly bought from the Evening Hatch, so you can get them in most fly shops. Great thing about this fly is that with this tail, it mimics several different food sources. So if you're dead drifting this under an indicator or you're nymphing it, it's very much like a stonefly nymph, just sort of free drifting through the river. If you give it a little bit of motion, this tail can act as a sculpin or as a leech or as a crayfish. It just gives it some movement, which can really entice fish. I'd probably say that these two flies come in third to my super secret fly, which I'll mention at the end of this video. If you are into throwing streamers, my absolute favorite streamer is the Sculptzilla, 
or the Sculptzilla Jr. And actually, I love the Sculptzilla Jr. more. I think one of the reasons why I like it more is that it, it casts very nicely on my four-way trout spay rod. Um, I enjoy using my Scandi head on my trout spay rod more, and so smaller streamers tend to throw better on that. Um, I'll usually fish these on a 10-foot Versaleader, and usually I do like a probably the heaviest or the fastest sinking Versa leader. But you can also throw these on a floating line and long leaders if you're not throwing sink tips. And you can even put them under an indicator and sort of dead drift them through slots. Um, that's a pretty deadly technique as well. Uh, my favorite beta style nymph is a fly pattern called the Quildagon. This pattern was developed by Devin Olson um, and it's actually been picked up by Unqua Fly. So congratulations, Devin. Um, it's a Fairly simple fly. Um, it has a cochlidion tail, it has a little flash in the butt, and then use polished quills to get this great banded look. The black on it is just nail polish to, for a wing casing. Um, and this particular fly, I'm using a inverting tungsten bead um, that looks a little bit like a teardrop, but I'm sure you could do this with regular slotted beads in a jig head or even a standard nymph in a standard standard bead. I tend to tie this fly in size 16. I will use, I think this is a 2.8 millimeter bead and I will tie them all the way up to three millimeters, 3.5 millimeters. It works really great. I think this is probably number two to my super secret uh, fly. I've used these for years on the Yakima River and they have produced a lot of fish for me. Let me know if there's any flies that I should have on this lift that I left off. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe. And if you didn't like this video, just double click the dislike button and leave me a comment below on what you didn't like. You've all been waiting for it. I've been mentioning it, my secret fly. And uh, I've used this everywhere. I've used this on the East Coast. I fished the upper Delaware branches with this. I have fished it in Idaho for West Slope cutthroats. I have fished it in Oregon on the Metolius and the Deschutes. I have fished it all over Washington and I will fish it everywhere I go and I will catch fish on it. So, here it is.